Hello and welcome back guys, this is Ibrahim Khoshi here and we are continuing the topic virtual machine templates and clones. This is module 2, so let's get cracking. So as you all know that we are going to cover a lot of topics and um, we start off with uh, you know what is virtualization, installing vCenter, ESX host and uh, we recently covered what is virtual machine. Now today we are going to see two important things and the differences between two important things. Uh, which I'm going to discuss with you. Uh, let's see that. So we created a virtual machine previously, uh, which is here. Now we are going to see two important things, which is you know how to remove how to remove the virtual machine from the inventory from the VE Center inventory, and then what happens when you delete a virtual machine. Now let me just give you some heads up. If you delete something, it's gone, gone for good. Remember that. So obviously, if you delete something. If you think you will be needing needing it or you will require it, I wouldn't suggest you to delete it. Just you know, power it off, power off the virtual machine, and create a folder called decommissioned or deleted VMs and drop it in that one so that you have it for later. If you do need it, you can easily power it on and you still can retrieve some data from there. But say for example, if you delete it, and I'll show you in a minute when we do a demo, it's gone forever. Okay. So that covers the delete part. Now we'll look into a little bit in detail on how to remove and re-register a virtual machine. Okay. So let's. So we saw all the files and everything about the virtual machine. So that's covered. So let's start our demo. Okay. So this is my vCenter here. I am going to use the example as this particular VM. Now I have three of these VMs. Can you see that? 22, 23, and 24 is VESXi. So these are basically nested ESX servers for vSAN deployment. So we are going to remove this from inventory so it will be disappeared from the inventory. But before even before we do that, I want to highlight that this is basically running from this particular data store, which is MGMT DS01. Okay, so if we click on that and then we need to click files, then we can go and see the folder where it is. So that's ESX22 we are talking about. And these are the files. Okay, now let's go back and then remove it from inventory. Right click and you will see remove from inventory. So you need to be an admin to do that or you need to have specific permissions to remove uh, we sent the server uh, inventory items. Okay, so let's do that. There you go, it's gone. Let's try and search for that item and see what we find. VESXI22. Nothing is found. Okay, however, because we just removed this from inventory, it still is within. the vCenter. So the way to get it is go to data stores, select the data store where it was running, scroll down and then find the ESXi22 and this is where it is. Now <clears throat> I just wanted to highlight a little bit about what we discussed here. If you remember in the previous session I discussed a little bit about the VMX file which is the config file. So virtual machine configuration file uh, which is in each virtual machine directory when you create it. So this is a very special file and not just for config reason but also it has a uh, ability when you delete a VM you uh, you can re-registering uh, register it using that particular config file. So if you see I'm selecting these files here this is the NVRAM which is the RAM so if we click on the VMX file which is the virtual machine name and dot vmx you can see instantly the register highlights yeah and i click on the vmx file the register vm gets highlighted if you're directly connected to the esx host you can right click on the esx host and then you can register it so let's go back here and go and select the vm we are trying to register and never ever register the same vm twice on the same vcenter if it is registered on one vCenter or one cluster, don't try to register it on <laughs> another cluster just to be, you know, um, show that it's there. it will create a conflict and it will basically um, cause problems. So 
there you go this is not showing the registered but if you click on BMX it does come up so click on that and then click next so by default it takes the same name which uh, it has as you can see here uh, we'll put it on decom because let's try and delete that after that finish there you go it's it is registered now let's go and search there you go it comes up immediately and it is here now if you do don't need that i would say if there are vms which you are not using and you don't want to use for later on you just basically right click here in the vm and uh, template for section here this is the host and cluster section this tab is vm and templates this is data stores um, and this is called storage and networks which is networking really so over here you basically right click and then you go to new and then we can create a new folder for vm and template folder and then we call it de co mmissio and decommissioning and then within the decommissioning folder what you can do is um, you can drop the vm here so you can leave it there up until you know for sure you don't need it maybe after a month you keep an habit of you know re deleting it from this because obviously at the end of the day if you're using this um if you're even powering it off it's not reusing the compute resources which is cpu and memory but it's definitely going to use your <clears throat> excuse me your disk right your storage so you can see this this basically is uh, this particular vm is not using much but uh, but other vms might be using some of the resources like 14 gb is used as you can see here and it's allocated 100 gb so those sort of things um okay so it's coming down to the end of the demo so i want to cover the last bit which is what happens when you delete it so when you delete it it's gone for good simple as that so i will go back here and find the virtual machine and it is here as you can see so it, obviously i don't not need this particular one so i'm going to delete it but you guys if you're deleting a virtual machine that is basically deleting it forever okay um so make sure you back up everything or if you have a, a backup on vCenter, back it up on the vCenter and uh, whichever product you're using. Um, you know, you can have a third party product uh, like Veeam or you know, uh, the Altro backup, Veeam backup, and other products as well. So, we can use um, if you're using those ones, you can back it up before you delete it so that later on, if you do need to restore it, you can do that. Or better off, delete uh, powering it off and leaving it there until a certain time that you're sure you don't need it so to delete it again you need to have certain permissions you need to have uh, permissions to delete inventory items and then you just right click and go here delete from disk that means it's gone for good delete this section of uh, delete the selected virtual machine and its associated disk if other vms are sharing the either disk the shared disk will not be deleted and the VM will continue to have access to the shared disk which makes sense right so obviously if it ha has a shared disk then it, the disk will not be deleted but it doesn't then it will be deleted the complete VM will be deleted click yes and that's it it's gone now you try to search for it no result found and then similarly if you go to storage just to look for it again You will not find 22 so vesxi 22 is not there it's gone for good that was that is what it means so i hope you guys uh, like the demo and uh, question of the day what is the best way to authenticate uh, vcenter server appliance i think um, i did ask this question for vcenter server uh, which you did but uh, i'll ask another question which is related to this particular session uh, what happens if you delete a vm we've been discussing that so i hope you write the right uh, write down in the comment the right answer be sure to check out my blog and uh, agileops.co.uk and if you do 
have any problem setting up your own lab i uh, i can provide you an online lab um, on my data center uh, reach out to me on twitter or direct message me on twitter or email me uh, hello at agileops.co.uk and then i'll get back to you of course it's uh, it is a lab which is hosted by me so it is going we are go i'm going to use my resources cpu memory on my infrastructure my internet and my time to set it up so it is going to be for a small price which i'm sure um wouldn't be much at all because uh, if you try to set up a similar lab with 32 gb memory and uh, a, s a good amount of cpu with storage it will cost you a lot of money and all that so that's all for today Folks, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button and notification bell if you want to get updates from me. Enjoy watching and keep sharing. Cheers. Bye.